Hey guys, Bold Chaos here with the Disrupt Gaming Channel, and today we're going to be looking at TSM and how they win pistol rounds. Now, if you guys aren't aware, TSM's Valorant team recently won the FaZe Clan Valorant Invitational back in early August. They beat some of the top North American talent in Valorant to win this tournament, so I've been watching their gameplay to see how they were able to do so and win the tournament. Now, before we get into that, I'd like to quickly remind you guys that if you're new around here, make sure that subscribe button and turn on all post notifications to stay up to date with everything Disrupt Gaming related. If you like today's video, if you learned a thing or two, make sure to drop a like. And last but not least, if you have anything to say about the video, make sure to leave a comment down below. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to dissect TSM in just a second. But real quick, I got a question of the day for you guys. And that is, what is your favorite pro team in Valorant? My personal favorite team in Valorant is Disrupt Gaming. And no, I'm not biased. No, they're not paying me to say that. I just really like their roster, I'm gonna be honest with you. So if you have a favorite pro team, let me know in the comments down below. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at TSM versus Sentinels in the upper bracket finals for the FaZe Clan Valorant Invitational. In game two of the tournament, they play on the map Haven. The first pistol round I wanna show you here is the very first round of the match. Now, TSM is on attack and Sentinels is on defense. Now, what's interesting to show here is Sentinels does something on defense that you don't normally see in matchmaking. That is, they stack a site with four players. They got two people long and two people short, and they got their Cypher solo holding C with his abilities. Now, what's interesting to note here is if TSM decided to go C right off the bat without any knowledge that they stacked A, this would be a four to five V one against that Cypher. This is a big gamble for Sentinels and it actually almost pays off for them right away here because as you can see, TSM is grouping up towards mid. They got people window, they got people grass, they got the spike at grass too. And if Sentinels were to push right away, they would have had that 1v4 gunfight against the TSM Cypher, and then they would be flanking the people mid. However, Sentinels plays it a little cautiously, as you would with taking such a big gamble. And as they slowly work their way towards A lobby, TSM is slowly working their way towards B. If we pause it here at the 1 minute and 27 second mark, we got TSM making their move towards B. We got four people entering B, as we can see at the front, with Sabrosa flashing in as Phoenix. The A players that were long are making their way up long. The A players that are short are making their way up short. Brim is starting to rotate towards B. And if we look, Cypher for TSM is holding down mid window. Now, TSM gets B site quite easily as the smokes come down. So does Recon Dart lands and as Sabrosa flashes in as Phoenix. As you can see, not only does TSM get this site unscathed, but they have nobody in between them and A site. All of the defense is flanking through A as we can see. So TSM gets B site uncontested. However, they lose a man. Now what's interesting to note here is TSM starts trying to take more map control here. So they decided to push through to see if they can catch anyone rotating from A or C. Sabrosa makes his way into their spawn. They actually end up spreading out too far. They can't trade each other's kills and they end up losing their round. Now, I know I talked about how TSM wins pistol rounds and now I just showed you a round where TSM lost the pistol round. What's so significant about this round you may be asking? Well, very simply put, TSM and Sentinels face off once again, this time in the Grand Finals. Sentinels plays this a little bit differently. They don't stack A this time. This time around, they're stacking B in mid. As you can see, they got three people garage with Phoenix at the front with his flash ready to go. Jet's holding down B by herself and Cypher is at A long. Now TSM, knowing that they did this the first time they played Sentinels, they play it as if they're rushing B and taking the site once again. And sure enough, they jump out a window, they push out. But what happens here, because TSM has Jet and Cypher watching their flank, Sentinels can't push B through Garage. They have to fall back as you can see here, and they don't take the fight to mid, and they play for the retake at B site. Now what ends up happening here is TSM is actually not going for B. Even though they took the site, they're actually making their way towards A. And they do this perfectly with a smoke by their brim to block off the A link site so that Cypher, who gave up A in an attempt to retake B, is now having to play behind this smoke. He ends up spamming the smoke. He doesn't do too much significant damage. He may get one or two body shots off. But for the most part, once again, TSM has the A site completely uncontested. Now, if we pause it here at the one minute and 13 second mark, take a note at TSM's map control. Because TSM knew that Sentinels knew that TSM likes to rush B on pistol rounds on Haven, TSM used that to their advantage and rush B once again. 
This time, however, they played it perfectly so that they actually used it as a fake to actually take a site. And now, as you can see here with this map control, not only do they have the entire site to themselves, but Sentinels has one guy heaven and four guys spawn. TSM knows there's no one A long because they have a Cypher who just cleared it. They know no one's pushing the spawn right now because Wardell just came from spawn. So now they know for a fact that the enemies either have to come from heaven or spawn after the spike is planted. So TSM sets up for this in their post plant situation. They plant the spike for spawn, which is actually very interesting. What you will see next is a perfect post plant hold. Now a post plant hold is a topic I've talked about on the Disrupt Gaming channel. What makes a good post plant hold and what makes a bad one. In this example specifically, TSM groups up to play for the trade as you can see here with three people in hell. You don't normally see this in matchmaking, but TSM specifically does this because they know for a fact they're gonna get pushed from both spawn and people dropping out of heaven. And sure enough, as Sentinel starts their retake, they push through spawn and heaven, just like TSM planned. So Broza as Phoenix sets up his flash, and unfortunately for TSM, he gets picked off here as Sentinels is anticipating it. But because Sabroza had two teammates in hell with him, they're able to swing out and get the trade for Sabroza and for TSM. Hayes gets a nice double kill. Drone as Sova gets the kill on Zoms as Brim as he drops out of heaven like so. And just like that in the blink of an eye, it's now a 3v1 in favor of TSM. And then Sinatra does his best to win the round for him and his team tries to fight the guy's hell, they can't get the kill, and now TSM wins the pistol round. Even if TSM hadn't played Sentinels in that first matchup against Sentinels on this map, they still played this absolutely perfectly. They made lots of noise at B, they took this site uncontested at B, causing Sentinels to adjust to a potential B take, including their lone A player having to set up for a B retake, and by doing so, they cleared off a site without killing anybody, set up their smokes to completely block off anyone watching them push into A, and then they get the site uncontested over at A. Because they knew where the enemies were coming from, they had the majority of their team in the position so that they can trade any potential kills coming from those choke points. Now to see how TSM wins defensive pistol rounds, we're gonna go back to the upper bracket finals once again against Sentinels once again on the map Haven. TSM employs the same strategy as Sentinels and they take a gamble by stacking a site. They start off with their Cypher holding A by himself. They got three people on B site and they got one guy in garage. They have nobody C and they got three to four people mid. Now, this is a risky gamble, especially for TSM because Sentinels has all five people working towards A. They got no one lurking mid, grass, a C long, they're committing to A. Now, how TSM is able to retake this site perfectly is actually quite interesting and there's a lot of lessons to learn from it. So, Cutler, who is the cipher for TSM, has his camera set up, has his tripwire set up. He hears the noise, he sees the abilities come down, his camera picks up some footsteps, he knows for a fact that Sentinels is committing to A site. And he's calling out to his team that they're taking A. Now, Cutler is in the heaven smoke here at the 1 minute and 21 second mark. And if you guys look, Sentinels, again, for the most part, have the site uncontested. Cutler's in heaven, he can spam the smoke and try and get one or two hits on people. But for the most part, there's not going to be a whole lot of gunfights happening for Sentinels. Sentinels can get on the site, plant the spike, and set up their post plant without having to fight anybody. And sure enough, TSM having gambled on B, they now have to rotate towards A and make their way to play for the retake. When you rotate to the site that the enemies are taking and trying to plant the spike at, it's very common for you to push the site and try and stop them from planting the spike and trying to save the site from being taken. Now that's very common, I even do that from time to time, but TSM does something that Sentinels tried to do against them in the grand finals, and that is playing for the retake. So Cutler as Cypher gives up a heaven and he waits for his teammates. Sabroza makes his way to spawn. He's playing around the smoke in spawn. He's flashing out, maybe trying to get a kill or two. But for the most part, he's not pushing into the site and trying to kill the planter. And then Jet and Sova are setting up their utilities at B to try and help them out at A. Sova's shooting a recon dart and it actually allows Cutler to do some damage from heaven even though he smoked off. Brim was anchoring C just in case this was a fake but now he realizes that the spike's being planted at A, so he's making his way towards A site from CT. But if we pause it right when the spike gets planted here, notice how because TSM waited for their team to rotate, because they didn't try and be the hero and try and take the site, now they waited for their team. Notice how they accidentally now have the man advantage 
Sentinel sent off their jet, who is Shazam, to go and lurk and try and see if he can catch anyone rotating or flanking a site. And because they waited, TSM got lucky and they now have the man advantage. They have all five people here ready to push the site and try and retake the site because Shazam is on the flank, like I said. And sure enough, as TSM pushes in here, Sabrosa takes the initial damage here with that recon bolt. He has to back up. He flashes in, takes a shot, shock dart, gets some damage on the brim here, but for the most part gets killed in a crossfire. Even though they just lost Sabrosa and now they're down a man, they actually still have the advantage in both health and ability. Now this is a textbook retake and for a number of reasons. Number one, even though they had the numbers, even though at one point it would have been a 4v4 if TSM pushed the site and tried to stop the plant, TSM still waited for all five people there just so that they can have a full force and a full push into the retake not only that they saved a lot of their abilities for this retake so they're able to flash sova had his recon dart and his shock dart to do a lot of damage to the enemies and they're able to just do so much damage with their abilities that they didn't have to do a whole lot of damage with their pistols they're able to retake the site with ease and they are able to win the round like i said at the beginning when i saw tsm won the tournament i went back to watch the matches just to see how they're able to do so what I learned from them is something I've started to implement into my personal play when I play Valorant, and it actually helps me out quite a bit. TSM is a very disciplined team, as you guys saw in both offense and defense. When they had their plan set out, even if it wasn't working initially, as you saw with Sabrosa going down in that last round we analyzed, they were still able to win rounds because they still went according to the plan. They didn't deviate too far from it. They weren't scared to push. They weren't afraid to peak angles that they knew enemies were at and they had each other's backs. They got trades, they got their own kills, they were able to take and retake sites with ease because of that. And because of their textbook play, because of their disciplined play, a large amount of the pistol rounds they faced in the tournament, and in the end, they were able to win the game. That's everything I wanted to talk about for TSM and their pistol rounds. There's a lot to learn from them. The main lessons being play disciplined, play with your team, including waiting for your team on retakes, or if you're in a post plants hold situation, play with your teammates so that you can trade kills and use your abilities to assist your teammates as well. And you can do so by communicating, talking, making callouts. And if you do so, you can play like TSM and win pistol rounds too, which is very crucial because you get the upper hand right away. Now, with that being said, that is everything I had to say for today's video. Like always, thank you guys so much for watching everything here at the Disrupt Gaming channel. We put a lot of effort into these videos, so I hope you guys enjoyed them. If you do, make sure to drop a like. If you're new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on all post notifications and again let me know in the comments down below who is your favorite pro team in Valorant with that being said it's all the time I have for today I'm gonna get going all I have to say now is stay safe and remember every day above ground is a good day